Welcome in to Ravens Rundown, powered by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Appreciate you joining us. On today's show, we will go over the latest Baltimore Ravens news and rumors, including those around Lamar Jackson, as well as the Ravens defensive backs. And we'll give you one breakout player to watch for in 2022. Before we get to any of that, though, our question of the day. Want to hear from you guys. If you had to go back in time and measure who was the harder hitter, who would it be? Producer Chugs wants to know this question today. So I'm very curious. This is a this is a tough call here. I think I don't know if there's a wrong answer. I would lean towards Ray Lewis, but Ed Reed was tough too. Both these guys, man, uh you get excited just saying their names right. That's what you think of when you think of Ravens football is Ed Reed and Ray Lewis. So with that said, if you think Ed Reed was the harder hitter, type ER. If you think it was Ray Lewis, type R L. Let me know in the comments section which way or the other. Not a wrong answer, but I'm very curious how you feel either way. Lamar Jackson. It is going to be a very interesting year for Lamar Jackson. We all know this as he heads into this fifth-year option. And according to CBS Sports' Jeff Kerr, he is being highly underappreciated at this point in time. We'll go ahead and explain what Jeff had to say in a recent article, according to CBS Sports, Jeff said, What does Lamar Jackson have to do to earn the respect he deserves? Since Jackson took over as the Ravens starter in week 11 of the 2018 season, Baltimore is 37-12, and 12, a 75% winning percentage. He's the first quarterback in league history to reach 35 career victories before the age of 25, and is already 7th all-time in rushing yards, that's 3,673, among NFL quarterbacks. He went on to say, Jackson's the fastest quarterback in league history to reach 5,000 passing yards and 2,000 rushing yards, that's within 35 games. And his 10 100-yard rushing games are tied with Michael Vick for the most in league history. He is also the only quarterback to rush for 1,000 yards in a season twice his five games with 200 passing yards and 100 rushing yards are the most in league history so that's a lot of numbers out there and you know what's the saying from I believe it was the great Whitney Houston R-E-S-P-E-C-T Aretha Franklin rather thank you producer Chugs for uh catching me on that one Aretha Franklin would say you know when it comes to respect now Real ones know how good Lamar Jackson is. The numbers are there. I think we get caught up in some of these little things, right, of, okay, maybe this past season didn't go the way that it should have, and he's struggled with injuries, or maybe the lack of playoff success. But you can't put all of that on Lamar. I mean, real ones know how good Lamar is. I mean, it wasn't too long ago that he was the NFL MVP in 2019. You go back to 2020. And it was the players that voted him the number one player in the entire league. And then you got a guy like Bucky Brooks, for example, the NFL Network this week, saying that he's one of the scariest quarterbacks in the NFL. So with all that said, look, Lamar Jackson, when he is on, he's on and can be one of the most dangerous players in this league. And I agree, he gets underappreciated. We don't give this guy enough credit. So I know that's mind-blowing to talk about, especially with a former MVP, but I think it's true. So I want to hear from you guys. Is Lamar Jackson disrespected? This is our pin comment today. You're going to get an ad break. Take advantage of it while that ad's playing. Let me know if you think that the folks out there. Now, I know you Baltimore Raven fans love Lamar. But we're we're talking big picture. Is he not getting the credit that he deserves from the national media and all those other people out there? Let me know. Type Y for yes. Type N for no if you think Lamar is getting disrespected. Let's talk about the Ravens secondary. They are not getting disrespected. Pro Football Focus has ranked the Ravens defensive backs number one in the National Football League for 2022. 
Let's go ahead and give you some quotes from Michael Renner of Pro Football Focus, what exactly he had to say about the Ravens' DBs. There are a lot of complete secondaries around the NFL, making the Tier 1 rankings a toss-up in a number of ways. The Ravens simultaneously have some of the most question marks heading into 2022 from a health perspective, while also possessing the highest end elite potential. Four of the five starters have earned top 10 grades at their respective positions at some point over the past four seasons. And this list doesn't even include rookie first rounder Kyle Hamilton, who will undoubtedly factor in heavily. Now, if you've been watching this program for any length of time, in the short few weeks I've been here, I've already said this, that the Ravens had the best secondary in the league. So with that, I am glad that the the nerds, the smart folks at Pro Football Focus agree with me that the Ravens have the best defensive backs in the NFL. I mean, you look at their depth chart right now, Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters, of course, coming off injury. I love the signing of Marcus Williams, Kyle Hamilton, arguably the best player in this draft, fell right in the in the Ravens' lap. And then there's Kyle Fuller, who was a nice bargain for the Ravens in free agency. And then you still have guys like Chuck Clark back there and others filling the holes when it comes to the second and third team. So not only when I look at that group that you're seeing on your screen right now as a group of elite talent, but there's guys that can step up. You know, the thing for me, we mentioned the injuries that Pro Football Focus talks about here, that they will have to overcome those things. If, for whatever reason, let's say for all intents and purposes, that Marlon Humphrey or Marcus Peters, if they're not ready to go at the beginning of the season, if they do get banged up later, does anybody think that Kyle Fuller is going to have any problem stepping up to one of those top cornerback roles? Absolutely not. He is very capable. In fact... You can make the argument that a guy like Kyle Fuller, just as an example here, is going to be perfectly suited to step up in that role if his name is called upon. What if they somehow end up keeping Chuck Clark? If they don't make a move and Chuck Clark stays in Baltimore, don't you think he's going to be ready to step in if his name's called? Absolutely. So, yes, I love this Ravens secondary. I love the depth of this Ravens secondary. And watch out. This group's going to be a lot of fun in 2022. So, you saw the players there. I know you got a favorite. Give me a name. If you had to give me one name of who your favorite defensive back is for the Baltimore Ravens in 2022, who is it? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, I got a great deal for my viewers of Ravens Rundown. We have a great T-shirt combo. It's getting hot outside. I know you're wearing T-shirts. You might even be wearing T-shirts at work, quite frankly. Well, here's the deal. You can get this combo for 40% off, and the only way you can do so is by going to chatsports.com slash ball combo to get yours today. 40% off. You're going to be looking stylish. You can wear these on game days or when you're mowing the lawn. Great for every occasion. Chatsports.com slash ball combo for 40% off. All right. Another headline for you today. We go to Justin Mata BK, the uh, young man that is coming back for the Ravens for his third year on the defensive side of the ball, and he's been named as a potential breakout player for the Ravens in 2022, according to the folks at SB Nation. So let's tell you a little bit more about Justin, the defensive tackle, played in 15 games last year, started in 11, and if you go back to 2020, he was the team's third round pick. Now, Justin talked a while back in April saying that he felt like he had a lot more to do, that there's still more growth in his game at this point in time. Let me take you to these quotes of what SB Nation had to say in the Baltimore beatdown this week. They said, Matt Abike, his talent level, as well as the situation he's in, suggest he could be ready to pop off. He will surely get plenty of one-on-one opportunities against opposing guards and tackles, and he often has an athletic advantage over many of them. If he can become more consistent on a down-by-down, game-by-game basis, a career-best season in 2022 
is easily within the cards. The Ravens badly need some pass rush on the interior, aside from Campbell. Mata BK may be the team's best player in this department. I got to tell you, I think he can be special. I really do. I think they may have found somebody here, and we saw some glimpses of it last year in 2021 with his numbers, 36 tackles, two sacks, seven tackles for loss. There's no reason to think why Justin can't bring those numbers up further and have a breakout season in 2022. I like what he brings to the table, his natural playing ability. Now, if he can just put it all together, watch out. His uh, presence certainly could be felt this year. What do you think? Will Justin have a breakout season in 2022? Let me know in the comments section. Type B for breakout. Type NB for no breakout. Let me know one way or the other if you think it's going to be a breakout year for Justin here in 2022. Last note before we go, we now know the arrival dates for Ravens training camp, which will be here sooner than we know it. The rookies are going to report on July 19th, while the veterans will report on July 26th. We will cover it all for you right here on the Ravens Rundown. We'll be all over training camp. Never miss a moment. Subscribe now to the Ravens Rundown. You'll be glad you did as we catch it out at training camp here on Ravens Rundown. Thanks for joining us.